All right, so we just started uh, talking about memory addresses. Now, um, <clears throat> let's just uh, look at this code again real quick. So I have a variable named x. int x, I set it equal to 5. Now I made a little uh, visual demonstration here. Now looking at this portion here, this, uh, this blue box here represents a scope here. Just pretend like it's within a variable could be within scope. In this case, x is within scope here. X is the only variable that's within our main scope. Now uh, we have the variable five that's inside this. That's the value inside this box here. So imagine that we have a variable here. We put it into a box that only stores integer type here. So this variable type is an integer here. So there's there's basically a four values. There's four there's four different properties that we really need to that I'm going to be using in this tutorial here. So the property of a variable is a type. It's a type integer. It has a variable name. In this case, I called it the name x, and it has a memory address here. I don't a memory address would look something like this. We don't care what it is, but it does have a memory address, and um, it has a value here. In this case, inside this box is the value five. Okay, so let's say I make another one here, and um, I'm going to call it int um, arrow. All right, so if I make another variable here, basically I have a new box here. It's within scope here because now. I have two variables that are within scope. I got the variable named x and the variable named area here. So let me uh, let me uh, copy these over here. And I'm going to put this one uh, I'll just put this one like right over here so we can see it. arrow here and then it'll also have a memory address and we don't know what it would be but it would have a memory address so we, it's got to be different here so I'm just gonna it's just gonna be a different memory address it could be anything we don't know exactly what it would be so variables have names they have a type they have integers here and of course there is always a default value here there's no such thing as having an empty variable here. So if we start to use this here, there will be some unknown default value that's in here. So there is something in here. Okay. So that's what we know so far. So if I run this here, we get out five and nothing happens here. Now um, what I can do, this is something new here. If I put this uh, asterisk right before this variable here, right after the int type and before the variable, now this variable type is called a pointer. So what do pointers do? Pointers can only hold memory addresses here. So in this case here, I am going to... Um, I'm going to use these set of eyeballs here as a pointer here. Okay. So this just just lets me know that this is a pointer type object. So what do pointers do? They can only hold memory addresses here. So in this case, if I want to set arrow equal to something here, I can't just set it equal to 7. It's I have to set it equal to the memory address of x or something like that. I gotta set it to the memory address of any int type variable here. Now this particular pointer here can only store um, memory addresses here. So looking at this illustration here, I have a I just this is my uh, initialization here. This is my uh, this is how I declared a variable type pointer. Now I'm going to give it a value here. I'm going to 
give it a value. Now I can only give it values of, me of memory addresses here. That's what it can do. It has its own memory address, but we don't worry about. We're not going to worry about this particular one here. Oops. But um, this right here, I, I gave it an, a, a memory address here. So in this case, this memory address is going to equal. Let me lower the font size here. This guy here. This variable here is going to equal 003CFBA4. That's just the uh, mem that's what this value can hold inside this box is just memory addresses. So to keep things simple here, I'm going to use I'm just going to make a use this arrow here. Um, move these down here. So these guys here it points to variable types here. In this case this particular pointer is pointing to um, this here, this memory address here. So keep in mind that pointers can only store memory addresses here. Now how can we use a pointer here? Well first off if I output the value of a pointer here Let's see what happens. I get a memory address. Because it's the memory address of X. Because remember this arrow is pointing to that memory address of X. Because this variable is equal to the uh, memory address of the variable X. Now how would we be now what if we output X here? We all just we should just get the value of 5 here, which we do. Um, oh, I already have it right here. Let me delete this here. Okay. Now, what I want to do, I want to, um, I want to change the value of a, the variable here. Now, we already know that we can say x is equal to 7 and output x, and the value will change from 5 to 7. But we need to do this through a pointer now. Now this is the advantage of a pointer here. Actually, we won't see the. We'll see how to use the pointer, but we won't see why it's necessary to ever use a pointer in this tutorial here. But we, you'll see how they can be useful here. So I could I can use this directly here. We already learned the assignment operator in lesson one or two, or maybe three. We can say x is equal to something. But now we're going to learn this thing called dereferencing. Now if I take this pointer here, arrow, and if I set it equal to something, like if I wanted this arrow to equal 7 here, this will be illegal here because this can only store memory addresses here. So this pointer here that's pointing to this variable, can we can only assign it memory addresses. That's all we can do. But if we put the asterisk right before it, now what this ver this guy here, He's this variable here is basically you know it's like hacking into an account. You can change this value here indirectly through this pointer here. Now if I output the value of x here, it still becomes seven here. So pointers have the power to change the value of variables. Uh, that, cause it, so we can make this variable point to something else and change that value of this variable here. And that's the advantage of a pointer. Well, that's how we would use it. But in it, right now, you're, if you've never used a pointer before, you might think it's just easier to use the assignment operator with the, um, the regular variable. Just change the variable directly here. Say x equals 7, you get the same result. But in the next tutorial, we'll see why we would want to, oops, to use this dereferencing here. So right here, see this value here? I give it a value. I give it a memory address. In this case, these can store memory addresses. Now, if I use this 
when I put the asterisk below before this uh, variable here, I'm actually changing the contents of that that box here. This memory address here, I'm changing the context of this box here. And this box's memory address is this here. I can change the value of this to 7. Because this is pointing to this particular memory address here. Now, I don't care what this one is. I don't care what this one is. Just keep in mind that the pointer is pointing to something else. Now, it's going to have its own memory address because it's taking up memory as well. But it's just pointing to this guy here. And we can change it through a pointer. Now, we will see why we would want to use this later on. But this technique here is called D referencing. So now we know two different ways to change the, the variable here. So pointers, they store memory addresses and they can change the value of the variable that it's pointing to. In this case this pointer is pointing to the variable x as one might put it, but what's really going on is it's storing the memory address of this variable here. And we have the power to change it whenever we would like through this guy here. But right now, um, it might just be easier for you to use just x equals 7. But we'll see the why we'd want to use this in the next tutorial. So that's it on this tutorial here. Um, this is how we declare a pointer. We declare it in two different... I declare this here, and then I assign it a value here. Now I could do all this in one step. But right now I'm not going to. So I declare it and I assign it. I just output the, the original value of x to the screen. I change it indirectly through a pointer. I change the value of x through a pointer. Indirectly and then I output the new value here. So that's it. So this using this dereferencing here, this is exactly the same as using just x. I could have just put x here. And we've seen that already. That anytime I use this dereferencing operator, which is the asterisk, it's the same thing as just using that variable here. So that's uh, the end on this tutorial. I hope I made that quite clear. That pointers can store memory addresses, but this little accessor here allows them to access the contents of that variable. So. Um, so I hope I made that quite clear, and then let's move on to the next video to see what else we can do with pointers.